Hey there, it's Professor S. One more time around the horn with functional groups. So in the first two functional group videos, I spent some time talking about what a functional group is. I introduced the hydrophobic methyl group, the hydrophilic hydroxyl group, the hydrophilic and acidic carboxyl group, and the hydrophilic and alkaline amino group. The two groups I'm going to present in this video are two groups that in my experience, we don't utilize quite as often in introductory biology curricula, but we do interact with them and uh, students should know them. They're a little bit more specialized. So let's start with the phosphate group. A phosphate group consists of a central phosphorus atom surrounded and covalently bound to four oxygens, one of them through a double bond, two of them which bear a negative charge, and the fourth of which has a covalent bond to attach to the organic molecule's core structure. The key thing with this phosphate group is that it is negatively charged. Now, you will sometimes see these illustrated with hydrogens in the position where the negative charge is over there, or sometimes you'll see the negative charge labeled. Either way, it's still a phosphate group. And that's one of their keys. They carry a negative charge. But the thing is, most of the molecules in biology that have phosphates attached to them have phosphates where negative charge is interacting from different molecules, different Different molecules or different parts of the same molecule, the negative charge creates repulsion, which adds potential energy to chemical bonds. And so phosphate groups play a really critical role in cellular energy transfers. Anytime you see a molecule with a phosphate group, it's almost always involved in cellular energy transfers. When this is written in text, there's two ways I've seen it written. The first way I have over there is kind of the really not the most appropriate way, and that's to write it as PO4 too negative. The problem with writing it that way is the shorthand gives you the impression that the phosphorus is covalently bound to the core organic structure. Really, the better way to write it is OPO3 too negative. Placing that one O separate and having the covalent bond more accurately reflects what you would observe in the actual molecule. Now, here's an example of a phosphate containing substance. It's adenosine triphosphate, ATP. And you can see very clearly all three phosphates there. And you can see the negative charge is really close together by having them strung out in sequential order. And all of that negative charge creates repulsion that strains the covalent bonds, giving them additional potential energy that is released to do cellular work when those bonds are broken. This is a classic example of a phosphate containing molecule used in cellular energy transfers. So there's phosphate groups. Let's erase this and go to the last one, the sulfhydryl group. The name is self-explanatory. It's a sulfur bound to a hydrogen, sulfhydryl, kind of like hydroxyl. The sulfhydryl group is hydrophilic, but really the place we see it play out the most is in protein chemistry, and particularly when we get two sulfhydryl groups in either different molecules or different parts of a single molecule together where they connect and form a very strong double covalent bond called a disulfide bridge. In protein chemistry, and again I've got a video on this, uh, sulfhydryl groups play a key role in the tertiary folding structure. And so this is important in building and, and constructing proteins into their proper conformations. Here's an example of a sulfhydryl containing molecule. Uh, this is cysteine. Cysteine is a, is a uh, amino acid. It's a sulfhydryl containing amino acid. So it's used in building proteins and it's exactly the molecule I have in mind when I think about sulfhydryl groups forming disulfide bridges. So there you have four different functional groups. Hydrophilic, hydroxyl. Hydrophobic, methyl. Hydrophilic and acidic, carboxyl, hydrophilic and alkaline amino, negatively charged for energy transfer phosphate, sulfhydryl groups used in forming disulfide bridges to maintain stability within molecules like proteins. Now, the capstone to all of this is just to understand, if you know these six groups and you recognize their properties, then you can encounter a new molecule and you can interpret that molecule very easily, like we can't just make it appear, we have to drop it, huh? Anyway, here's acetyl-CoA again, it appeared in the first video. 
You can look at this molecule and if you know those six functional groups, you can look at it and go, oh, is it acidic? Is it alkaline? Is it both? It's alkaline. There's an amino, but no carboxyl groups. Uh, does it have hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions to it? Both. There are methyl groups and hydroxyl groups. Could this thing be used in cellular energy transfer? I mean, I know I said that, but is it, yes, multiple phosphate groups. You get the idea. The better you know these groups, the more easily you're going to understand organic macromolecules. And even those of you, you those of you, those of you in anatomy and physiology, even those of you in that curriculum, y'all are going to be dealing with pharmacology down the line, drugs or organic molecules. This is going to be information that helps you out. Good luck. It's Professor S one more time. I try really hard here on the Sci-Fi Videos channel to keep my videos instructional time under five minutes. I don't always succeed. And so when videos like this one that run close to or over six minutes, I just want to say at the end, joking aside, long credits aside, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and don't forget to subscribe so that you can see other videos as I put them out. So I'm going to be cranking them out continually and I uh, hope to see you again soon.